cylindrical plunge grind tungsten carbide shafts. Our operators play around with parameters and eventually find the sweet spot of the wheel. But this takes time. Is there a quicker way to do this? Here's a company I visited a couple weeks ago. We spent an afternoon on their shop floor uh, looking at one of their grinding operations. They were grinding in carbide, they were doing cylindrical OD grinding, they were grinding these kind of carbide rings, and they were plunging in and then doing a wipe right at the end. Wanted to find the sweet spot of the wheel. They had just uh, got a new wheel that they liked, and they said, okay, we gotta find a sweet spot. What's the quickest way to do it? So here's what we did. We got the grindometer, we measured power. The grindometer measures power uh, in the spindle. That tells us how much power is required in grinding. That tells us how much heat generation is going on. If you don't have a grindometer, you can just look at the amp load meter on the machine. It's not quite as good, but usually in most cases it's good enough. If you don't change the wheel speed, you just change the part RPM to give you a relative power reading. This is what we got. And what we did was we said, okay, you're running it, whatever RPM you're running at. Now I want to take that RPM, take one reading, measure power, and then increase it 10%, measure power again. Then on the next part, I want you to drop RPM 10%, measure power again. Then on the next part, I want you to increase the RPM 20% higher than standard, measure the power, and then decrease the RPM 20% from standard, measure the power, and keep going. Maybe take six, seven, eight, nine, ten readings, something like that, to get a picture of how the power varies at different RPMs of the workpiece. And you'll get something that looks like this. And pretty much every single grinding operation follows this same curve. Uh, when you run at a faster workpiece RPM, your wheel acts softer, so to speak, and your power goes down to a kind of steady value. If you run at a very low RPM, what that means is your grip penetration depth gets very small, you get a lot of rubbing, and your power goes up. Now, RPM doesn't really mean much to me. The grip penetration depth, which is really what I'm interested in, depends on the RPM, depends on the wheel speed, depends on the part diameter, depends on the plunge speed. So what I want to know is how does it vary according to the grip penetration depth? So I calculate the grip penetration depth for each of these points, and that's given by this big, long, nasty equation. But plug it into Excel, it's not too bad. Put the values in, and you'll get a number that's usually between 0.5 and 1.5 microns uh, for the sweet spot of the wheel. Or you can use the grinder's toolbox, and you get the grip penetration depth. We plot that again. And we see, okay, 1.91 microns, 2.04, 2.28, 2.41, 2.56, 2.71 microns. So this sweet spot is actually quite large for this operation. I said most of them are between 0.5 and 1.5. But the sweet spot for this guy is as high as 2.41 microns. The sweet spot is always where the curve starts to level off. So as the curve comes down, 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 right when he starts to level off, that's the sweet spot of the wheel. What happens if we get too far over to the right on the curve? If we get too far over to the right, where our grit penetration depth gets two, three, four microns way up there, the grit penetration depth is so big, the forces on the diamonds are so big, the diamonds just get ripped out of the bond material. Prematurely, we get lots of wheel wear. If our grip penetration depth is too small, then the grits just sort of tickle the surface. We rub, 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 rub. When we rub a lot, we generate a lot of heat. When we generate a lot of heat, the uh, worst thing that can happen is the carbide cracks, but usually before then, the resin gets soft, and when the resin gets soft, the grits get ripped out of the bond material. So we get actually a lot of wheel wear that way too. So in this particular operation, with this wheel that they had on this machine, with this type of workpiece, their optimum grit penetration depth was somewhere in the ballpark of about 2.4 microns. That's where they need to stay on this operation. So now, whenever they run with this wheel on this machine, with the same material type, they always want to be running at 2.4 microns. 
They can choose whatever wheel speed they want, whatever workpiece RPM within reason, whatever plunge speed they want, but they just got to make sure that they're always at around 2.4, 2.35, 2.45 micron grit penetration depth so that they're always in the sweet spot of the wheel. So this is an operation, or this is something I do all the time when I visit companies. I say, okay, let's take a couple different power readings by changing the workpiece RPM. If we can't do that, we can change the wheel speed. That's usually not as good as changing the workpiece RPM, but we can do that and see how the power changes. Then when that curve starts to level off, that's the sweet spot of the wheel. That's where we want to run always, regardless of the other parameters, we want the grit penetration depth to always be at that point.